Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play My Little Everdell, a game designed by James A. Wilson and Clarissa A. Wilson and published by Starling Games. Let's get to the game. Based on the classic game Everdell, My Little Everdell is an entry level game in which players playing as teams of animals will gather resources and spend them to meet friendly critters and explore exciting places. As players explore, they'll gather points, new abilities, and aim to participate in the game's high scoring parades. The player with the most points after four seasons of play will win the game. To set up, lay out the board. Take a number of the green resource dice equal to the number of players. So if it were a three player game, I would take three, placing them on these squares. On the road, place the four stacks of matching parade tiles. Each stack should be sequenced so that the highest scoring tile is on top, down to the lowest scoring tile on the bottom. Remove all of the fort and captain cards from the draw deck. These are the cards which do not have any resources showing in the top banner of the card. Shuffle the rest into a face down stack and then deal eight face up below the board. Place the moon token above the first leaf at the top of the board. This will be used to count the four seasons in the game. Each player takes a home board and three matching pieces of the animal friend they wish to play. Choose a first player who takes the sun token and you're now ready to play. My Little Everdell is played in four seasons. To begin each season, gather all of the resource dice, roll them and then place one into each of these squares, up to as many as you have. It doesn't matter which die goes in which square. All players will then resolve a phase called gathering goodies, which is indicated by this green leaf icon. Nothing will happen here in the first season, so we'll explain this again later in the video. You'll then move on to taking turns. Starting with the player who has the sun and going clockwise around the table, each player will take turns, one at a time, until all players have taken three turns. Each turn is resolved in three steps. The first step is to place a friend. Take one of your friends and place it into a space showing one or more paw prints. A space showing one paw print may only be occupied by a single friend. A space with multiple may be occupied by any number of friends. As such, if the board were laid out like this, you could not place here or here, but would be able to use this space or any one of these three. A small space with no die should not be used. After placing your friend, gain the resources showing on the die next to that space or on the sign. These are the game's main resources, resin, wood and berries. The basket lets you take any one resource of your choice and the coin icon gives you one victory point coin. Place any resources or points you collected onto your home board. The second step of your turn is to play one card. This is optional, but you'll try to do it as often as possible as this is how you gain the cards below the board and gain the points and benefits they bring. To play a card, choose any one card from the display and pay the cost in resources shown at the top of the card. Then place it beside your home board. There are two main types of cards, places and critters, and it's recommended you place critters to the left and places to the right. Then replenish the market from the top of the deck. All cards grant you a special ability, either immediately or ongoing, based on what's printed at the bottom of the card. And there are five different types of ability based on the color of the card. Tan colored cards grant you an immediate once-off ability, Gain the resources printed at the bottom of the card. You won't activate this ability again. When you play a green card, you also immediately gain the resources printed at the bottom of the card. This icon is the same one that we saw marking the seasons at the top of the board. And each time you move to a new season, during the gather goodies phase, 
you will gain the resources from all of your green cards again. If you get this card early in the game, it could produce its resources up to four times. Blue cards have no immediate effect when played. Instead, they'll give you an ongoing passive ability. Here, for example, every subsequent critter card that you play allows you to gain one point. Other blue cards may reduce the cost to play future cards. Red cards grant you a new, personal, single poor action space, which you can use to accommodate a friend on a future turn. You'll make this placement instead of placing your friend on the main board. And these are usually as strong as a resource die action. The last type of card is a purple card, and these will not do anything immediately, they're all about gaining additional points at the end of the game. In most cases, these points will come from meeting a certain objective. Here, for example, an additional point for every red card that you've gained. Some have no objective and are simply worth a lot of points. After playing a card, now check to see whether or not you qualify to take a parade tile. There are four different parade tiles. You qualify for this one if you've played five or more critters. This one requires five or more places. This one comes from having at least one card in each of the five colours. And this one comes from having at least three cards of the same colour, excluding green. If you newly qualify for a parade, take the topmost remaining tile from that parade stack and add it to your home board. You can't gain the same type of parade tile more than once, but you can gain multiple parade tiles on the same turn, and the same card can contribute towards multiple parade tiles. Once all players have completed three turns, you'll now move to the last two phases of a season. First is Return Home, in which all players retrieve their friends and return them to their home boards. And then the Sun token is handed to the next player clockwise, and the Moon token moves to the next season. Then continue with the rolling dice and gathering goodies phases of the next round. After four seasons are complete, the game is over. Now count up your final scores. All players look at any purple cards that they have and gain point tokens based on the objective showing at the bottom. Any leftover resources can be cashed in for points. One point per two resources. Finally, count up all of your visible points. That's everything in tokens, all of the points in the top right corners of your cards, and all of the points showing on your parade tiles. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whosever cards have the most points printed on them breaks the tie, and if still tied, victory is shared. If you wish to make the beginning of the game a little bit easier, or give an advantage to younger children who are playing, you can use any or all of these options to give that advantage. Firstly, you could give a starting resource bonus of one twig, one resin, and one berry. Secondly, you could give those players either their captain card, or their fort card, or both. The fort produces an extra resource of your choice during the gather goodies phase, including during the first round. And the captain produces one victory point in each of those phases. All of these options will allow you to kickstart your game a little bit more quickly by getting some higher valued cards earlier in the game. And that's how to play My Little Everdale. We hope that you enjoyed the video. If you found this video useful, please help us by hitting the like button and subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do that and hit the bell so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow Stella on Instagram for her board games journey. Comments, suggestions, feedback are all welcome in the comments sections below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.